Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at the latest model from a company I quite enjoy, Monsgeek. And here we are with the M7W from Monsgeek, a new wireless kit from the company that has continued to bring us quality aluminum keyboards at an affordable price. Uh, Monsgeek, of course, sister company of Akko, and I want to thank them for giving me a chance to take a look at this new board from them. So let's go ahead and dive into it. And what we're going to do is, let's take a look at what's in the box prior to revealing the keyboard. First, we have our pack of force break um, gaskets, and it looks like we actually have a couple of square pads. I'll have to see what those are for. We also have an Allen wrench which is going to be used to open the case. As with every Monsgeek we got a nice coiled cable USB A to USB C. Um, nice thickness and I'm actually quite fond of these. I've got quite a few um, from Akko and Monsgeek and usually that's the cable that I reach for. And we also have our 2.4 gigahertz dongle that says Monsgeek on it so at least we're going to know which one we're going to be able to pare down if we find this which keyboard it goes to. All right, as always, uh, Monsky concludes a piece of cutout tape uh, for the back of the PCB for the tape mod. Uh, I like that you know they include an already cut out. Me personally, I prefer doing three layers of tape, and I think it's just easier to get it into all the grooves, and it's it creates. A better pass-through filter. That's just my opinion. We also have our quick start guide and user manual that tells us all of the features that we have and how to use them. And as always with Monsgeek and Akko products, something that I much appreciate coming from uh, coming from uh, working in the industry that produced products. Quality assurance, quality control is extremely important and Akko and Monsgeek really do a good job in my opinion of it and here we are with the Monsgeek M7W isn't this a thing of beauty now this is the silver color it's quite light and uh, it's a very light silver and we do have the gold accents on the side and they don't move that's one of the things they fixed right from the get-go um, we have south facing five pin we do have a uh, plate mounted stabilizers that actually seem to be very well attached but we should have the ability to add screw-in stabilizers yep and there they are all right so these come well lubricated and they're quite soft if I had to guess they'd be palm stabilizers lock this back in place so we've got a 65 percent here with a four uh, basically a four square <laughs> um, navigation column as well as an exploded out arrow cluster and here underneath the caps lock keys we have the wireless mode switch so one of these is going to be uh, usually I think it's Windows up Mac down but don't quote me on that so as always with the Monsky kits we have a very solid hunk of aluminum um, they do have a tendency to do these recessed USB-C ports but at least the cable that comes with it work and for the most part most cables actually fit in there just fine now of course we also have the PC plate pre-installed we have a nice amount of dampening below the PCB and as well as between the PCB and the PC plate because um, they include this I always prefer to go ahead not only open it up and take a look at what's inside but go ahead and install the force break mod if you're not familiar with the force break mod it's basically for all intents and purposes adding a gasket at the screw holes so that 
because that's the the point where both the top and the bottom case halves are going to be making the most contact so they can sometimes create a bit of a ping or a ring and this helps to catch that and dampen it all right so i know we've got an allen wrench in here but i'm just going to go ahead and use my handy dandy hot oh! so let's go ahead and open it up So this has uh, definitely been the case so far in all the Monsky keyboards that I've done. And it's just uh, as a note, in case you're putting it back together, the short screws are always for the front, long screws are always going to be for the back. Alright, now that we've got it unscrewed, let's go ahead and gently lift up the top, which is a lovely piece of aluminum. I've yet to see a single mar on any of these Monsky products. So, um, in my opinion, it's all A-stock, or at least everything that I've encountered. I haven't read of anyone receiving anything dinged, so they definitely have their, uh, because, I mean, dings do happen in manufacturing. That just goes to show that their QA, QC is hard at work. All right, so here we've got the uh, PC plate that's got the gasket socks on here, and we're going to gently lift up because we don't want to pull the JST cable out until we're ready oh and we also have okay we got a separate battery and usb daughter board cable so i have to pull out the smaller one first and i appreciate um they use a better type of jst connector i don't know if you can see but it's actually uh quite well attached it's <laughs> this thing's not going anywhere it's not breaking it's very solid i have not had any issues with jst connectors with the Mons Geek boards. All right. So now we've got the plate and the PCB taken apart. It looks like, yep. As always, we have six screws that hold the PCB and the plate together. I'm gonna do something different this time, I think. We also see that we have a layer of foam and then this, I forget the name of it right now, but it is a uh, protective layer basically to to uh, prevent you know in case you really make flex that there's not going to be any shorts from the back of any of these sockets or LEDs touching the metal plate and here we see a very chunky 5,000 milliamp hour battery that that's going to last a while on a 65 percent board so first things first let's go ahead and do I wouldn't say mandatory, but it definitely makes a positive difference. And, I mean, as you see, it doesn't take long to undo those six screws and disconnect two JST connectors. So, I'm a big proponent of always applying these. Um, Keychron's Q-Series, when they first came out, they had a massive problem. And if I'm not mistaken, that's actually why the force break mod was started and before it was just try to find a thick tape um, and you could still do it with tape these are just like because they actually have the hole in the middle so that you can line it up with the holes that are there I usually cut the ones for the side but for the ones in the middle it just goes right over the hole so let's go ahead and install these gaskets I like to use the tweezers just to make sure I line it up properly This is the second kit that I've seen that comes with these four very thick squares. And I, I don't know where they go. I, I don't know if they're here to put, like, in case you're not using this to prevent the PCB from going down. I need to reach out to Mons Geek and ask. Or if any of you guys know, put it down in the description below and let me know. Because... Um, that's the only thing that I could think of. It's something to actually stick to. I would guess if you don't use this to stick to the uh, uh, plastic electromagnetic layer and prevent the, um, maybe it's the base. Maybe 
Maybe it's the stick on the back of the PCB. Uh, I'm not sure, but I have not personally seen what these are for, so I will ask um, to find out, but I'd love some help if anybody actually knows. All right, I'm going to take this uh, PCB core assembly part. Let's take a look at what's in there. All right, so we've taken the six screws that hold the plate and the PCB assembly together. Let's go ahead and lift up on here. All right. So here we have the IXPE foam layer. And apologies, I have been calling this IPXE. PXE is a uh, boot uh, protocol so that you can boot a computer off the network. And that's probably why I started using that, <laughs> not realizing it. Um, a nicely laid out PC that PCB that also includes uh, what keys are going there, which uh, I appreciate that silk screening is, I mean, obviously it can be reprogrammed, but that's what it is by default. That's what's set in the firmware. Now I'm gonna do something I don't usually do. I usually, just build the keyboards out stock, or I do the keyboards that are stocked since this is a build. And I've done some other mods get keyboards before. I'm gonna do a mod, I'm working on a video with more keyboards and different materials and everything. But perhaps some of you have noticed that there's some keyboards that are coming out that just sound amazing stock. They have one extra layer. And it's not foam. It is this PET plastic sheets. Now, this what I've got right here is four mil. I have not been able to source one mil yet, uh, which is the thinner one. So this one requires a little bit more work. But I'm of the opinion that that little bit of more work is worth it. This sheet is not quite big enough to cover the entire board, but because these keys, I mean, they get used, but it's not really that big of a deal. If we wanted to, if we really wanted to, we could cut out an extra strip. But then you're having to align two pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark it to where I need to cut it. Because I'm going to have to do a cutout for um, the switch over here. So I'm going to try to cut this as straight as we can. I think I'm going to just go ahead and center it, to be quite honest. All right. I think that's going to work. So, yeah, I'm just using the one piece. Now, this is, because this is a little thicker, this is what I'm having to end up doing. But, like I said, I, I personally think it is worth the effort. All right. So, we lay this down. I want to make sure this is lined up. All right. Now, I, I do believe my uh, son borrowed my cutting mat so I'm just going to use the cardboard box for right now to protect. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and for the holes for the screws, remember there's six of them, go ahead and do that right now, just punch through, turn, punch through, turn, punch through, try to do it right in the middle, turn. Because the center posts are not usually sharp on switches, we're going to have to go through and do those as well. This is just the edge of it, but all right. And basically just go to the bigger hole, punch it, a little turn, punch it, a little turn. Usually just the punch through gives it enough for it to go through, but I like to give it a little turn. But obviously you want to make sure you're not rubbing the sharp edge of the knife against the PCB. All right, so we've punched out the middle pin, or basically the stud in the middle, that big rounded out one. If we're planning to use three pin switches, 
that's all you gotta do. If you know you're not gonna use any five pin switches, you can actually just go ahead and use the uh, pins from make sure they're straight from a switch from a three pin switch and it'll punch through the holes for the pins it goes right through and if you do a close-up you can actually see the pins in there um, yeah, I've tried this several times and I've not had issues they work so um, I've done it also with just PE foam and also punching through. So obviously don't do it too, you know, if, if it's if it's not feeling like it's going in, there could be a reason why. So it's not, um, not something you want to punch out too hard, but as soon as you feel it give a little bit, then you can know you can go right in. And then afterwards, they're going to be a lot easier to put in. If you're going to be using five pin switches, the, the plastic legs are not going to pierce through the plastic. So, I just say go ahead and do it, even if you plan to use 3-pin this time, because if you want to go use 5-pin at a later date, it's already taken care of and you don't have to worry about it. So, there's several things you can use, whether it be a push pin, um, whether it be uh, the sharp edge of a um, of tweezers, but what you want to go is just want to go and punch a hole for each of those pins. So, my preferred tool to do the the five pins if you don't want to cut off the legs I mean obviously you can cut off the legs but if you can avoid modifying the switch it's usually best to avoid it but I like to use a sim ejector tool obviously I want to make sure everything's lined up and I put it where there's not this one it doesn't reach all the way over here so that's why I'm doing the first one over here just line it up in the middle and punch and uh because it doesn't really have a sharp edge it requires a little bit of pressure but as long as you're on top of the hole it's going to punch right through and that's not going to be a problem so I, I previously used a different um, sim ejector tool which I can't find the, the point on this one it's a little bit duller than I like so what I did was went ahead and grabbed a paper clip and straightened it out with some needle nose or something that has a cutter at the end of it. And then I just want to cut a little bit off the tip and give it a sharp edge that makes it much easier to punch through the plastic. You want to make sure to be on, right on top of the hole as the paper clip is almost the width of the size of the hole. Almost. Alright, so now that we got all the holes punched out, uh, we can go ahead and reassemble. Now, some may find that it's easier to put the plastic on the IXPE sheet, um, the padding between the plate and the PCB, and the plate assembly together as that'll prevent the um, the sheets from shifting too much. They should stay in place. Um, I've done it both ways. It's just whichever way works best for you. All right, so now we're gonna put this back together and we've already made the holes. All right, I was going to use some Akko Silvers to load up uh, the PCB, but I, I think I'm a few shy, and I, I really hate mixing up um, switches, so I'm just going to go with a... You know, I'm pretty sure I got enough of these. These are some pre-lubed Jelly Blacks, Akko Jelly Blacks, So, and they are only three pins. So, Like I said, those other pins are are punched out in case I ever do come back with three pen switches so let's go ahead and load them up
And here we are, the plate and PCB assembly all together with the PET mod. Now, if you guys want for me to do a stock sound test so you can do a, sound, a comparison like a supercut, let me know. Um, like I said, I just wanted to do something a little bit different this time since I've done Mons Geek and I've always done them stock. And I mean, they sound good stock. So I, I just wanted to do this to, to be a little bit different and to kind of give a preview. I'm going to be getting a lot more into detail into the PET mod and showing at least half a dozen keyboards with it with before and after. Um, so you can tell what the pet mod does and how it affects different not only switches but material cases as well. So now let's go ahead and assemble this board back up. All right, and we're going to leave the uh, stock foams in there. We're not doing the tape mod. Make sure it's all lined up with the gaskets there. All right, so we want to line it up. Make sure everything is good and in place. We got the flex. Keep it together as we flip it over. Oh. All right. It's usually best to just hold it down. I like to do first one at the top and one at the bottom. And I've got to change out bits. And again, not not tightening it all the way, just enough to catch. Still going to want to maintain pressure on there just to make sure everything stays in place. All right, now we've got everything back together. Now, as this is a Mons Geek, I would usually go ahead and stick with an Akko keycap set. Unfortunately, every Akko keycap set I have is currently being used, and I didn't want to. I, I cannot argued with myself over which to take apart but I also I wanted to stay with the um, monochrome theme so I went ahead and just picked out uh, these nice PBT black on gray uh, they're pretty thick and I, I like how they sound I think they'll not only help to bring this monotone build to life it matches with the switches a little bit with the um, case but I think it'll help us achieve a nice um, a nice uh, deeper tone for the sound test. I mean, it might come out a little bit on the clackier side for the Akko switches, but let's see what happens and go ahead and load up these keys. Well, I must say, I believe this sounds pretty good. Now, of course, again, um, I'm doing something that I don't usually do. I usually always go straight with stock, but I've done every Mons Geek before me stock, and I wanted to try something different. I wanted just one more example uh, to add to the video that I'm doing. Like I said, I'm compiling several keyboards, doing before and after. I know I don't have a before on this one, but uh, the PET plastic doesn't reach the escape key, but it does reach the Q key. So you may have noticed in the sound test, which I usually leave till the end. Again, I'm doing some things different. Doesn't mean they're gonna stay this way, but I need to update my process and I'm going through it and trying different little things here and there. So you'll hear in the sound test that I go back and forth on the escape that has no PET plastic underneath it to the Q, which does. So I think, and you saw we didn't do tape. This seems to add a different type of low pass filter. The tape acts as a low pass filter, but it's only catching 
frequencies in certain ranges, this is definitely capturing different frequencies and kind of bouncing them back out to you while keeping some trapped in the case. Um, as you see, everything else is stock besides just adding um, the PET sheet. And like you saw, it's really only right here. Um, in another video, I will do a bigger board and I'm gonna show you how I use two different sheets to cut out. Basically, I just add a tab, just a dab of um, grease to the separate pieces so that, I mean, they'll move around a little bit, but once you got them in place and you put the PE foam on top and then the, um, the dampening in the plate, it should hold, especially if you go ahead and do the corners. If you don't have studs for the plate to the PCB, then using switches on the corners should keep everything else lined up so that you can go ahead and punch the holes through. Um, again, if you're just sticking with three pins, only the center post is really necessary to punch out. Um, and if you're using five pins, I would go ahead and use either, you know, like I did uh, the tip of a sim, eject sim ejector tool or a clipped paper clip tip that will give you, the, the paper clip is gonna work much better. Or even if you have a needle, a needle will do the trick as well um, because it's got a sharp point and it'll just go through. The, the plastic's only four mil, it's not very thick. Um, I will put a link down below. I got this on Amazon, but I didn't look all that hard. I do wanna find one mil PET because I think that will allow um, the switch to just punch on through on its own. Though there is another material that I found that most people will have in their house that basically uh, creates the same effect as the PET plastic. And it's plastic, but it's not PET, but it's similar enough. And I will show that to you when I do uh, the comparisons as I'm gonna do one with the household plastic that you would normally find, and then with a PET sheet so you can hear the difference between stock this other material and PET material. So I'd love to get your guys' feedback. What do you think about this keyboard and what do you think about how it sounds versus you know, other Monsky keyboards? And I'm sure there, there will be other stock sound tests out there, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the PET mod. I know some folks aren't you know very fond of putting too much foam in the keyboard. I mean. As long as it doesn't impair the keyboard working properly and the flex is still good enough for you, I mean, foam is just kind of part of the process, in my opinion. So um, I don't know if there's such a thing as too much foam or too many mods. I mean, if it gets you to a to the point where you're happy with it, then I think that's I think that's a commendable thing. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and um, end this one. I really want to hear you guys' feedback, and again. The, the sound test is already in there. If you guys do want me to do a stock sound test, I'll take it apart. I'll take out the PET sheet and I'll do it without. Um, but like I said, I think that the, the escape and the Q comparisons should provide a good example. But I know some people want more and if you guys want to just ask and I'll go ahead and schedule it out so they'll do that as well but again i am working on a long term a video uh for i mean a longer form video that shows different keyboards with the pet mod anyway uh so far i am very impressed with this keyboard um it connects quickly over wireless um it's it's solid as the other monsky keyboards are it's well built Yes, it does not run on VIA, which all the wired ones do, but that said, their cloud interface is not one-to-one -one comparable, but it's very feature rich and there is, you'll practically be able to do 99% of what you can do on a VIA keyboard, on the VIA interface as you can with the cloud, Monsgeek or Akko. I mean, they're both basically the same they're just branded different um, but it's one piece of software and it'll work across all the Monsky cloud softwares so I'd love to hear what you guys think about this I think it's a I think Monsky continues to put out some very well built and very affordable and just a great value proposition keyboards because I mean solid aluminum I mean these are just uh, it's, it's so substantial. Um, now, 
do I think they work good paired with Akko switches? Yeah, I mean, we got Akko Jelly Blacks, which are an older switch in here, and I think they sound pretty good, though. Um, I'm sure I will come back to it, switch out switches and switch out caps, and um, perhaps try more or less foam and see what other sound profiles I can get. Maybe one day put some U4Ts in there and see how that goes. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I would love to hear your feedback and your thoughts and any ideas that you might have when I come back to this, any mods you'd like me to, to do, anything specific that you'd like me to take a look at, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.